Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a possible Thanksgiving week snowstorm in parts of the Great Lakes and the interior northeast, uh, and that could even be spreading into parts of the coastal northeast, that's going to be really the big debate with this system. So we're going to be taking a look at a couple of these different scenarios. We have one scenario where the storm goes by, you see a little bit of snow in the Great Lakes, and then other than that, the northeast really misses out on the snow, uh, as well as the Ohio Valley, and then we have another scenario where both of these areas getting on some snowfall we might see a redevelopment of a low pressure center off the shore of the northeast and that's what could drive some of that extra snowfall on the back end of the system and that would happen right around tuesday or wednesday when that might happen so that's where it does get interesting where you're coming around the most active travel day of the year in some of these spots uh, for Thanksgiving uh, day and so when people are traveling to go to their family's houses you might be seeing a little bit of messy weather in the form of rain and snow and that is what's really going to be important uh, this is going to be a really important forecast to get correct because of course it is going to be impacting so many travel plans as well so we're not going to have a snowfall forecast or really a definitive answer on which one's going to happen in today's video but we will be taking a look at what could happen what is expected to happen from some of these models um, we're going to be comparing two different scenarios so this is going to be more of a discussion rather than a forecast I'm thinking that by the weekend uh, maybe by Monday we or Sunday or Monday we'll have a snowfall forecast out at least for the initial part of the system so uh, let's get into it and let's start off with the current National Weather Service page you can see that we do have a few winter weather advisories up into Washington, Idaho, and Wyoming, as well as back through Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York. Uh, we have some freeze warnings up for parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana, as well as some parts of Georgia. And then we have some red flag warnings scattered throughout parts of Wyoming and, Cal uh, and Colorado. Yesterday, we had a high temperature of 92 degrees in Rio Grande Village, Texas. The low temperature was negative 11 degrees in Peterson, Utah. Highest rainfall report was just 0.9 inches of rain near Rocky Mountain, Montana, uh, and there were no snowfall reports yesterday. So here's a look at what the current run of the European model is showing. Now we're going to take a look at both runs, uh, the most recent one and then the one right before that. So we're going to look at the 12Z and the 6Z run and compare both of them because the 6Z run is showing that snow in southern New England and spreading along the coastal northeast and then uh, the 12Z or the current run of the Euro uh, European model is not showing that it's showing uh, a different trend so we've been seeing this on and off over the past couple of days I've been getting a lot of comments about this system so I decided to make a video on it again we are still far out so anything you see on any of these models don't take it to be truth because Again, these models are going back and forth, so a lot of people are going to highlight the one model run, maybe out of 15 or 20, that ends up showing a big snowstorm for their area. Uh, and even if it's the big, even if it's just maybe one out of three of the models, people will always pick that one model and say, well, there's a chance of a snowstorm. And of course, there is a chance of a snowstorm, but again, you still have to uh, pay attention to the other models which you don't show that snow. So you can't really just cherry pick you, the models that show whatever you want in the forecast and then say that that's what's going to happen because a lot of times these storms end up dying out before uh, before they actually happen because the models overestimate what occurs so Starting this off, you can see that we do have a little wave of energy through parts of the Great Lakes. That's going to grow up, and we're going to see that move up into parts of Ontario and the upper Great Lakes. So we have a low-pressure center right around the UP of Michigan or maybe crossing over into southern Ontario. Uh, we might see some snow on the back end of this. It is going to be warm ahead of the storm, and then behind the storm, we're going to have really windy and cold uh, conditions. And this is what's going to set up uh, that potential redevelopment low pressure center off the east coast that could bring in some snowfall so this is going to be for Monday morning uh, of this upcoming week. Uh, you can see that we have some snow spreading out across parts of the Great Lakes. We have rain along the East Coast, uh, and that goes all the way from Maine down to Alabama and Georgia. So really a widespread rain event. Uh, we will have some windy conditions again on the back end. So we could see some really gusty winds, especially over some parts of Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. Uh, and you could see, of course, winds. With all that wind, some lake effect snow off the lakes behind the system. 
Now, I notice that we do have a little bit of a wave of energy down here as well. So we have something trying to form down in the Carolinas. And this might get scooped up by the system and brought to the north. If that were to happen, it would align perfectly with a trough of cold air moving through the northeast. And of course, you can guess what would happen. You would have some snow uh, with that as well. So uh, let's play this through. This model of the European does not show that as well because what happens is that the low pressure center is still there. So it's over here and then it gets picked up by that wave uh, or that line of storms and it just kind of moves out to sea and we really don't see uh, a lot out of that system. It curves back up into Nova Scotia. This is by Tuesday morning. Uh, but again, the, the fast moving pace of this uh, of this line of storms uh, on the 12z European or the current European run uh, indicates that this storm uh, down in the southeast would just get picked up and kind of brought up into uh, Atlantic Canada as a rain event and you would really see very little if any snowfall in the northeast and any snowfall that you would see would be back end or lake effect snowfall so nothing that would really be too significant in terms of accumulation rate uh, or anything that would actually stick to the ground all that well this is by Wednesday morning uh, and for Wednesday and even into Thanksgiving on Thursday it will be breezy cold for the northeast pretty much no matter what so that's not really going to change within the forecast but whether you have snow on the ground or not for that thanksgiving meal will be the big determining uh, issue and something that we do want to figure out by the time that we head into this thanksgiving week now here's the previous run of the european model uh, and it just goes to show you how different these events can actually be uh, just from one model run to another. So we start off pretty similar. We have one little area of low pressure right into the Ohio Valley. Uh, we see that move up into Ontario, but you can see it's much uh, it's a much flatter system than what we saw before. Before we had a more dynamic, already very wrapped up system into uh, the UP of Michigan, and then once it moved up into Canada, because of all that energy, it was pretty much just traveling further northeast, al almost at the same latitude as Labrador up in Canada so really really high up there in terms of how far north it was going and because of that uh, it was dragging this entire band of warm air also further to the north so you really didn't have that supply of cold air and it was also moving much faster so a flatter storm is going to take a little bit longer to move along it's not going to be as wound up uh, and that means that this is going to allow more room for this system down here to move up to the north into the uh, Atlantic part of the United States so right off the shore of the east coast uh, these areas could get impacted by this next wave of energy so look at where that storm is this is by Monday evening so on the 6z European the uh, the second to the most recent so the one right before the most recent uh, run of the European has this low pressure center right here by this point it is still fairly close to the coast we're looking at maybe just a couple hundred miles uh, from the shoreline of Virginia and North Carolina to the center of that low pressure storm uh, and then we have your leading low pressure to the north so this is what's bringing down this entire frontal system uh, and then on the southern end of this you have another wave of energy so it's very rare that you see two 995 millibar systems or lower in a relatively close area and this is what's making the forecast so difficult these models are not used to having to deal with two powerhouse storms with such close proximity to each other with another really powerhouse trough of cold air right behind it so you can imagine how difficult this is if one little thing moves if this low pressure system is a little bit further to the north that could delay this system moving to the north it might not even get picked up with the same speed and that means that this trough might dig in a little bit deeper so little changes uh in that initial low pressure center which was again down in ontario to start off with and now is through central quebec if that changes just a little bit maybe to the north or to the south maybe it gets a little bit weaker a little bit stronger there are big implications if the there's maybe just a little narrow shift here or there. So this is really a challenging forecast for these models to pick up on. 
that low pressure st system uh, again started off down here and look at where it is now it's all the way up here starting to blend in with that other storm which was up here so they're now starting to blend in and what's going to happen is that it's going to curve back into New England uh, because we have a dome of high pressure over eastern Canada which means that this cannot go anywhere it's completely blocked off meaning that it's going to just have to kind of sit and wait it out but it has to keep on moving and can't just stall out so it's going to actually have to backtrack to the west and as it does so by Tuesday evening and Wednesday morning uh, we're going to start to see this system bring in a little bit of snowfall so here it is stalling out uh, just south of Nova Scotia uh, you can see we have that storm right there uh, and that's what's going to be uh, become our snow producer in these areas so you can see that it curves back up into nova scotia and uh, even new brunswick up in canada near that area and now you can see snow uh, breaking out into central new england uh, even into some parts of massachusetts as well moving this on you can see that that would move further to the south as well the gfs i know has shown a lot more in terms of snowfall uh and again this was just showing you two little clips of that snow but that snow did if you were to look at each in increment in the model it would extend into southern new england and even into some of these areas as well i just wanted to fast forward that just for the sake of time uh, with this. So I'm not going to go through every single painstaking detail of each model run because that's kind of useless. We want to figure out what's generally happening uh, and that'll give us a better idea. We don't really have to analyze each individual little detail of each model run because again, they change every six hours. Every single time a new model is generated, a new model run uh, is ran, we're going to see a completely different outlook on what could happen. So here's the initial run. So this is the one that did not show a lot of snow in the northeast. We saw that snow, of course, back in the Great Lakes, mainly in the form of lake effect. But you look at this and it pretty much just looks like your, like your normal late November picture. You just have lake effect snowfall. You have light coatings of snow through the northern plains and the interior northeast. And the rest of the uh, northeast, the Ohio Valley, pretty much untapped with uh, the snowfall. But take a look at what happens on the uh, 6Z run of the European. We have a lot more snow into areas of the uh, northeast, especially for New England, where you could get maybe a few inches of snowfall, and it is going to be cold enough that that would stick and it would stay on the ground even through Thanksgiving Day and maybe even into Friday or Saturday uh, because these high temperatures are really not going to get that high up. And we're going to take a look at that in a moment. Here's a look at the upper uh, upper air map for these two model runs. So this is the 12Z model run. So I'll write it up here in the, in the top right corner. So this is the 12Z model run, uh, which is the one that did not show too much snow for the northeast. And look at what you can see. You can see that we have a high pressure center. It's all the way uh, up here. We have another one, uh, which is back uh, further to the west. Uh, and then we have this trough, which is down here. Uh, and that's what's bringing in uh, your your cold air, and that's what's your main driving storm for this event. This is the 12Z model run, and here's a look at what the uh, 6Z model run shows, which is the one that actually showed most of the uh, snowfall in the Northeast. One thing that you can really notice is take a look at the top part of your screen. Look how, uh, how much more expansive uh, this is for these areas uh, in that part of the uh, in that part of the model where you can see that we have uh, some of these amounts or some of these height anomalies being uh, quite a bit above the normal. So that red line just kind of as a base marker uh, is all the way down into southern Ontario, uh, southern Quebec, which means that this system uh, right down here has nowhere to go. If it moves up, it's going to be kind of just bounced right off and it'll have to kind of make a circle until it finally has some exiting room out into the Atlantic because of course we know that storms in this part of the country like to move from west to east so it wants to move naturally across the atlantic and in this part of the uh in this part of north america typically these storms also want to move a little bit further to the north so they want to move pretty much northeast uh as, so that they can start to gain uh latitude uh, and so they can start to gain strength a little bit more and it can't really do that because this is all getting blocked off and you can see how much more blocking there is up into 
parts of central and eastern Canada, which is really causing that issue for the storm. And because of that, it sinks further to the south. We already have that cold air in place. It's way cold and uh, way uh, more cold than you would actually need. You don't need that much cold air, but we have it in place. And if you're going to have it in place, you might as well use it. And in this case, we do use it. We get a little bit of snowfall if this were to be the case. And again, that's only if this were to be the actual outcome of this event. Here's a look at also the temperatures. So these are the high temperatures, not the low temperatures, which are much lower than this. Uh, this is the high temperature for Monday, and you can see that along the coastal northeast, it is fairly warm. We're looking at high temperatures getting up into the uh, even mid-50s, so really mild into those areas. And then you look into the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes, and it gets chilly. It's uh, only getting up in the daytime, up near 30, uh, 25 in a lot of these areas, so fairly chilly for this time of year. And then if we look at Tuesday, you can see that shift where uh, it goes from being fairly mild along the coast to now being a little bit chillier. We're only getting into the 30s uh, during the daytime. Interior spots only getting up into the 20s. Uh, and feels like temperatures or the wind chill will definitely be colder than that. And if you look at the low temperatures as well, it would be colder. And I'm not going to show you again Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Again, we're not going to, I don't want to really dwell too much on this one instance right here. But uh, if you were to look at Again, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all of those days would be fairly chilly. There would not really be too much change, and you would see this general troughing shape into the eastern United States. So if it is going to stay cold, uh, all you would need is a little bit of precipitation to move into this area, uh, and that's going to be the challenge. Of course, you need that precipitation to move to the north for anything really to happen uh, in terms of snowfall. But if that does end up happening, if we end up getting a little bit of snow uh, right before Thanksgiving, that would definitely be fun. Uh, and it, again, it wouldn't be a ton of snowfall. It would just be a couple inches. It would be enough to shovel off uh, the driveway. But also, it would probably be enough to stick to the grass and actually cover the grass. So it'll make for a nice scene without having too much of the downside of having to shovel away a few uh, inches or a few feet of snowfall. So it's not going to be a huge event, even if it does snow. Uh, it'll just be a quick couple or a few inches of snowfall. Uh, it'll be your first of the season in a lot of areas of southern and central New England, as well as for areas, if it were to snow as far south as New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey, that would also be very our first snowfall in some of those spots so it would be fun uh, to see especially happening uh, for Thanksgiving week so you would have that on the ground for that Thanksgiving meal of course it would be less fun to travel in so uh, I will be keeping an eye on this and I will have definitely more updates on the system because of how important it will be to travel implications so uh, that is going to wrap it up for today's video uh, again if you have any questions or comments just leave them down below again I'm not going to give uh, out specific forecasts just yet because personally I'm not completely confident in the forecast just yet so I'm thinking that I'm gonna wait until Sunday or Monday to really be more specific on the snowfall totals things like that and we'll start to refine the fine details by that point, uh, we'll probably have your snowfall forecast uh, by Monday uh, at the latest or Tuesday at the latest. Uh, so again, this is going to be a fun week to track uh, these storms and to track this possible snow and cold. Uh, and again, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Goodbye.